Uh, the economy is good. Lots of jobs. Uh, this overstates the case a little bit. It doesn't account for Florence. Uh, I'm sorry, for what? Florence, the, the hurricane. Oh, the hurricane, yes. Yeah. Uh, ADP, the way it's constructed, it won't pick that up. So. Why? Why not? Um, ADP, all you have to be is on the payroll to be counted as an employee. You don't actually have to get a paycheck. Exactly. For Does that campaign. mean that the ADP September payrolls number may be a much higher number or may be a higher trend than what we will see with It'll the be higher. report? You know, I, I think Florence will probably shave 25K. So we're still at 200K. So it's still a really big number, but it's not quite as big as ADP would say. Okay, so yeah. anybody anticipating this who looks at ADP as yeah. a, a precursor of what to expect Friday, look for the trend, it, it could be right, but for this week in itself, it may not be quite as tight. Exactly, as and just for context, 200K is double the rate of growth in the labor force, so unemployment will decline on Friday as well. Where, where are the biggest areas of strength? It's everywhere. Uh, that's the hallmark. It's Geographically and from sector? Yeah, pretty much. The only, there's two sectors that are not adding. One is uh, retail, so Amazon's doing a number on brick-and-mortar guys. And uh, mortgage banking now because uh, mm. mortgage rates are up and that's starting to suck the wind out of. Your I'm actually surprised activity. to hear that with retail because we have heard so many of the traditional retailers talking about their seasonal hiring going to be very strong numbers. You've got like 120,000 expected at Target, maybe 100,000 at Macy's, 55,000 in other places. I mean, to me, when I start hearing about the seasonal hires, not just with those traditional retailers, but also with Amazon, with UPS, with FedEx, those numbers are bigger than we've ever seen. Yeah, before. You, we'll get a bump probably. This is all the tax cutting coming through. Uh, it's juicing up retail sales temporarily, so you're going to get a bump. But uh, underneath that, uh, the brick-and-mortar retailers are still struggling, obviously, with the online guys. Does that make up, I mean, is that made up for with jobs in other areas? Like oh, yeah. The delivery I guys, mean, like you the know, warehouses? yeah, it's, uh, oh, yeah, sure, on the online side, yeah. So net-net, it's still a job creator. Uh, interestingly enough, you look at uh, job openings, so there's a, where we have a record number of open job positions. It's evident across every sector, including retail. So that suggests that, you know, they're laying off workers in some places, but they right. need other workers. They just don't, can't find them. What, what do you make of what Amazon just did, decided to do? It, it's indicative of how tight this labor market is. You right? think that's what it is? Well, it's two things. One, it's they're getting nailed publicly. Right. So, but it, they wouldn't do it otherwise, I don't think. The economics are But and there. But I, I, what do you think the forcing mechanism is going to be for every other retailer as a function of it? The labor market. They can't find those. Going back to my open job positions, they can't, find, they can't fill those open positions. This, this labor market is rip-roaring hot. It's just going to get a lot hotter because the stimulus is driving unemployment into the low threes. And so uh, the, the risk that this economy overheats is very high, and this is just one more piece of evidence of that. Where will we see it? When will we see it? I, mean, I guess you still keep watching those average hourly earnings numbers to, to look for inflation. Don't look there. Don't, Don't look there. Because? So, because it's a, it's a bad number. It's, it's messed up by all the mix issues in the labor market. Look at the employment cost index. Now, we don't look at it as often because it's quarterly data, mm -hmm. but it controls for mix. So private sector workers, wage and salary growth, is 3% year right. over year. That's double what it was three years ago, and it's accelerating. Can I ask you one other question, though? We keep talking about how real estate, especially in major cities like New York, because of the oversupply and elsewhere, Denver, other places, it actually is not nearly as hot as it used to be. And I wonder whether that will ever, you know, talk about a hot market, whether that will actually impact consumer spending come this fall when people start to see some of those prices come down and how that then sort of translates. Yeah, this is housing, right? It's a housing so, yeah. story. But, but you know, you, you just put it into some context. I mean, over the last five, six years, house prices have been rip-roaring, in, in, particularly in those markets, right. Denver, San Francisco. You know, they're well above pre-recession levels. So, yeah, it'll go flat here as the market adjusts to the higher mortgage rates. But I don't think it's going to be a significant drag because you still have the tailwind from the tax cuts, right, that's going to flow through, at least over the next year.